My partnership with BMS Celgene started nearly three decades ago because of my interest in myelodysplastic syndromes, which are also called as pre-leukemic disorders. This particular program builds on all the clinical and basic research that we have done over the last three decades. And it asks the fundamental question about what are the changes that occur in our blood cells, both in terms of the changes that occur in the genes that form the blood cells, as well as in the immune system of the body, and why hematological malignancies like other malignancies become commoner as we get older. So this is a five-year program, which has got genetic component to it, immunology component to it, and a very big clinical component to it. And over a period of time, it's hoped that these components will come together and give us understanding into these diseases and also point ways towards new therapies in the prevention of some of these disorders. Thank you. This is really a great opportunity for us to talk about this really unique project and it's unique in many ways in being a collaboration between Bristol Mass Squibb, academics and clinicians studying clinical hematopoiesis and aging in this large prospective cohort of patients. I think we now realize that clinical hematopoiesis potentially has significant clinical effects on about a quarter of patients over the age of 65. Correct, Lynn. Um, completely agree. This is really an ambitious project that I think cuts across many facets of disease as well as healthcare. And treating and one day predicting and preventing health issues that are associated with clinical hematopoiesis is really an area that's ripe for interrogation. And as you say, it really impacts a significant number of, of the population. So with Bristol-Myers Squibb um, having a foothold in all three areas, hematology, inflammatory disease, as well as cardiovascular disease, I think we're well positioned in our collaboration with you to help address this area. And I think our collaboration with King's is really is, is an indication of Bristol Myers Squibb's commitment to these efforts. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this project really builds on the foundations of advances in genomics, hematopoiesis, immunology. And from the outset, I think we've wanted to bring together these three fields, which have perhaps in the past sat a little apart. The clinical data really is telling us that, that we have a need to really integrate our research efforts in immunogenomics. And this collaboration has brought together this expertise here at King's and also at BMS to focus on how clinical hematopoiesis contributes to really the most common age-specific diseases like cancer and cardiovascular disease. Very much agree, Len. This intersection of cardio, immuno-oncology, as well as hematology mixed with genomics is not a typical access that we focused on um, crossing across these three disciplines, but rather these have been individual efforts. So really this, this uh, combined effort and our collaboration has really thrusted these three areas within Bristol-Myers Squibb together in a new and exciting way to think about these healthcare issues. Yeah, and you know, I think, um, I find that this is a rapidly moving field both in terms of discoveries about clinical hematopoiesis and its impact on human health, which of course then throws up even more questions about how this happens mechanistically, but importantly, what we can potentially do to intervene and prevent some of these diseases of aging. I also think we're really lucky to be working in this field at a time when technological advances allow us to study cell biology in great detail, for example, using single cell techniques, and to understand cell cell diversity in really an unprecedented way. Yes, and I think what really excites me about the collaboration is that together we're really embracing and recognizing that as technologies and these tools advance to interrogate biology, we really need to collectively work across the ecosystem. We need to partner with academia, uh, such as yourself, as well as biotech, um, to use these advances to really understand the causal biology and links to human disease. And in this particular case, it's clonal hematopoiesis. So by starting with patient data, this is really the most relevant model. But as we know, there's so much complexity that comes with it. But I think it's really key that we start with patient data rather than for example, cell lines, which has its value, of course, 
Um, but in this particular circumstance, we're starting with patient data. And it's really the technologies that are single cell based will help us unravel that complexity, speaking to the technology that you mentioned. And furthermore, as you said, the computational methods around machine learning and building predictive preclinical models are really important. And these are all gonna be focal areas for our collaboration. And Anita, I completely agree with you. And you know, this is one of the really exciting aspects of this collaboration where we're able to work together and combine our expertise, even at this early preclinical stage of our research. I think right from the start, we have had these sort of conversations with colleagues in BMS and with our clinical colleagues. That means we have a really clear line of sight. So when we're ready to translate our findings to clinical trials, it should be a smooth transition. Yes, and that's really what our focus is. It's the focus is on the patients at the end of the day. So Bristol-Myers Squibb really has a long-standing model of working closely with top experts such as yourself in academia to bring forward novel platforms, tools, as well as these clinical development programs across our disease areas of interest. And I think the KHP BMS collaboration is another fantastic model of how industry and academia must work together to provide these innovative solutions for patients in the effort to improve healthcare around the world.